Maybe I need Spanish translation. Raise your hand if you've ever climbed a tree. Tree climbers, docile, oh my gosh. Okay, raise your hand if you've climbed a tree and you're over 70 years old. <laughs> this is our speaker, oh my gosh. So, this is what all of us need to do when we retire. Uh, anyway, we are changing out. Uh, Neville Winchester was not able to be with us. And so I will be filling in for him in my talk at three something and because we're a little behind, but I'm really happy to have a special speaker for all of you. She is doing a documentary film to save the forests of the planet, and her name is Catherine Holden, and her title is Climbing Trees at 70. That means age, it's not a database. Um, <laughs> to save wild trees, and she's going to tell you how she is playing a role in our science by helping us get the message out to the public. I promise you, this afternoon is all fun. So anyway, enjoy. Thank you. I want to say up front that I'm not a scientist, and I'm not an athlete, and I'm not a public speaker. In fact, this is the first time I've given a talk. Um, but I want to thank Meg Lauman for making time for me here to talk to you about a project that came to me from literally out of the blue. 17 months ago, about five days before my 69th birthday, I was out on the deck of my home in Joshua Tree, California. Friends were over for a party. Bats were wafting over the koi pond. I had a glass of wine in my hand. And literally, I said to my friends, oh my god, you guys, listen to what just came through me. Climbing trees at 70, one woman's quest to save wild trees. Now, it's pretty interesting that I never questioned it. I never thought to say no. Immediately I said, yes, but of course, this is what I'm to do. Now, I've always loved tree climbing, ever since I was five. Ooh, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> and actually, two weeks before this project arrived, in my brain, in my heart, I had been climbing an oak tree in southern Arizona in the Cochise Stronghold. So trees I'm familiar with. But really, knowing how to tree climb and do this, I had no idea. So I want to say that in 2003, I sold my home in coastal California, and I moved into a tree house in northern Thailand on an elephant sanctuary. So you can see trees and I go back. But this was something brand new. What was being asked of me? How could I develop it, follow it, and honor it? About three years ago, I had read Richard Preston's mesmerizing book, The Wild Trees, and that gave me a hint of what's going on in the Mechanides. And then an internet search took me to Tim Kovar, who's right here, and his tree climbing courses outside of Portland, Oregon. I had to find out, can I climb trees? So I drove 1,800 miles, I took three courses, and I can, sort of. Uh, <laughs> My yoga gives me flexibility, but my age and my arm strength are not a perfect couple. So I know that any forest I go into around the globe, I must have a tree climbing assistant. Anything else would be lunacy. But you know this project is about connecting with other people anyway. It's not about, about me being alone up in the forests. Um, the, my age creates the, creates the niche. This, what did I say earlier today, the crone in the canopy? Uh, it's a unique, unique voice of an old woman up in the trees who can write about her experiences and combine information of biodiversity, threats, governmental policies, politics, local culture, origin myths. I want to do it all. The uh, trees are the stars and the focus. I'm just there to use my unique voice as an old woman up in their branches to broadcast to the world what's going on out there. Uh, by the way, these pictures are mainly by Leo Principe, and I'll talk about my experiences in Brazil in a few moments. So then there's the question, what forest do I go to? My initial list consists of the uh, church forest in Ethiopia, and, and I want to say right now that Meg Lauman has been total supporter of this from the first email she received from me. And she's invited me to go to Ethiopia with her. 
I also want to go to Brazil, where there's a conflict between soybeans and trees. Madagascar, where since the coup in 2008 or 2009, and the devastation to the rosewood. And then I've met with Natalie here at the uh, conference with her work on lemurs, so I really want to connect with her there. India and the Western Ghats, Borneo, and I would love to go there when the dipterocarps are doing their mad blooming, which seems to coexist with the um, El Nino phenomenon. When the blooming is so intense and then the seed pods are so many that it even changes the migration patterns of the animals, including elephants. So I'd like to be there then. Then there's Tasmania and the fight for the remaining old growth mountain ash uh, against gun industries. Canada and the old growth on Vancouver Island and the Great Bear Rainforest where there are proposed pipelines to cut through to take oil from the Alberta tar sands to the Pacific coast. And then the dream of dreams, the redwoods. When I was in the, in the late 40s when I was alive, one of the first movies I saw was The Enchanted Forest which talked about the redwoods being um, cut down. So the roots of the redwoods go way back in my life. And currently, the redwoods in the coast, with global warming, there's a problem with the fog belt. And in Sonoma County, currently, there's an issue between second growth redwood and new vineyards for red wine. So that's my initial list, but I don't know if that's where I'm going to end up. Last June, I came within a hair's breadth of being in Peru. The New York Times was very interested in doing a story combining my project and the indigenous mahogany seed collectors in the Alto Porus region. And the local uh, New York Times woman, Andrea Zarate in Lima, Peru, got permission <coughs> for it, but then at the last minute they would only allow two days for the trip and that's not enough time. But she's continuing to be a big supporter. And I'm going to be in Peru next June, and it's kind of an interesting contrast because I'll be climbing with the indigenous seed collectors in the Alto Porus region, and then I'll be down in the Madre de Dios region, where there's an abuela who on her property, a grandmother, of course you all know that because you all speak Spanish, um, a grandmother who has this immense remaining mahogany tree on her property. So I love the contrast. One old woman going to another old woman who has this old tree, and why is her still standing? And then who are these young men who are collecting the seeds to save their species in the area where there are still large trees. So that's, that's going to be next, um, next June. In the meantime, I had to find out, can I, in fact, climb large trees in the tropics? And these pictures show me in Brazil. I flew there and spent two weeks with Leo Principe and his wife, Vanessa. Vanessa's here right now. He's a, a tree climber and a beautiful photographer. And we climbed about six trees. And I found, yes, I can do it, but I have to tell you, I sweated so much, I almost started a new tributary to the Amazon River. It was just amazing. But the last tree I climbed, for me this was terrific. I went up 140 feet in only an hour. And I had a bet with Leo it was going to take me three hours. He said, no, 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 you'll make it an hour. And I did. And it was into a huge, oh, isn't that amazing? Look at that same tree. We didn't get to climb that one. We will next time. That just blew me away for the day. <laughs> the Seba we did climb, the living design up there in the branches was just dazzling with the lichen that reminded me, oh, it's soft brown, pale green, almost a light pink, and it reminded me of old Chinese silk or antique French brocade, and there were monkeys clamoring in the canopy next to us, and uh, a falcon circled above us just three times. And at one point, I thought I could reach up and finger the feathers. It was so close. I also got to sleep 200 feet up in another tree. It was amazing. So now, this pro oh, I've written a book proposal. And already, one publisher is very interested in mountaineering books. And they want me to have gone to three or four fours and written those chapters. and then. Uh, present it to them again, but they said they love the project and to let people know, whoever I speak with, that they love it. Now this project demands everything of me. My creativity, my time, commitment, energy, enthusiasm, flexibility, finances, and perhaps my health. But you know what? 
I stand before you naked and naive and daring and deliberate because I just can't say no to this. It's just so amazing to me that my life's purpose arrived at such a late age. Now, when I talk to other people about this, there's sort of an infectious enthusiasm, because especially with younger people, because they go, gosh, if at her age she can grab onto this wild thing, then what does that mean that they're capable of doing in their life? It just, you know, I figure I've got 20 more years to be doing this, so it's, it's very exciting for other people to hear about it. And I must say, when people, <laughs> woe be to anyone who asks me, so what do you do? <laughs> yes, they hear the whole thing. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, there was a Muslim IT man on an airplane who wants to help me, a young man at Apple who wants to work with me on my GoPro videos. I mean, it's just everybody wants to be involved. And they always ask, how can I help? So I, I, I just love that. Now, speaking of helpers, I've met so many new people, and starting with Tim and uh, Tim Kovar and Meg Lauman and uh, Chris Fagan from the Upper Amazon Conservancy and uh, Andrea Zarate and Vanessa and Leo and so many of you here at the conference who are so supportive, it's really amazing what's happening for this project to, this project to continue. And to me, it's all of us finding a voice to help heal this earth. So to be able to protect in the healing, talk about the richness and beauty and what it means for each of us when these trees disappear. So I'm wide open to hear from you. You are the specialist. Your knowledge, experiences, suggestions, and indeed warnings would be a gold mine for me. And uh, anything I can do with my seven decades to help broadcast your work to the public Count me in. This project, this amazing unfolding path, is my offering to you. Thank you. when you can share over drinks, but if there is something pressing, I think this is more of a thought-provoking talk. So, do I, do I have a couple more minutes? Or is the 15 minutes up? You, it's up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just had no, these two, for, no, I won't say it. You say whatever you like. No, it's here. just that I have two really incredible dream images about trees, but if any of you are interested, buy me a glass of wine and I'll tell you what it's all about. <laughs> so we want to let her relax. I don't want any hyperventilating, passed out speakers today. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that, we're switching gears. You have the next talk. and hopefully